Aquarius, it's me, Stormy, and here's your horoscope for May 2018. And Aquarius, your ruling planet is on the go this month. Plus, we have also got Mars coming into your sign, so there's definitely some action, action, action happening for you, and some revolution, some rebellion is on the table. Now, this business with Uranus, your ruling planet, making its ingress into Taurus is got your fourth house shaken up. It's going to bring some renovation to this home, family, real estate, property, um, foundational level beliefs like the relationships between you and your, your tribe, right? It's going to shake these things up, which they have probably needed a breath of fresh air anyways. Now, for some of you, this is going to look like a move. For some of you, this is just going to look like I, I don't want to be where I'm at anymore. I want to break free from this and you're moving forward. And for some of you, I think too that you're going to be having having a little bit of a, a reflection on your part in kind of the chaos in your world. So we'll talk about all of that, okay? So let's jump in here and get to these dates. Now, right at the beginning of the month on the 3rd, we've got Mercury leaving its shadow time, which this I think is important to know because with Mercury not being any kind of in any kind of funky orbit, it means we've got his full direct attention and blessings. Now, this is our planet of the mind. You are an intellectual sign, Aquarius, okay? So you really want any of the mental energies to be full on, full force, and ready to go. So with this, the mind is clear. The decisions um, can come with a little bit more savvy behind them. If you've got to make negotiations, you need to sign a new lease. Whatever these things look like, we've really got our communication planet on our side and giving us full blessing, okay? Now, on the 12th, Mars is going to come into his shadow time before he retrogrades. So what happens when we have a retrograde is there's four parts. There's the shadow, the retrograde, the planet comes direct, and then there's the other shadow. So in the first part of the shadow, what the planet is actually doing is kind of like packing its suitcase, right? It's like, oh, I'm getting ready to go on a trip. I got to slow down. I gotta pack, I gotta get ready to go. So with Mars slowing down here, one of the things we need to pay attention to and be mindful is moving purposefully, right? You've gotta be mindful of what you're doing, how you're moving, why are you investing your energy in this? Because when Mars is retrograde, he's gonna ask you to relook at why are you putting action and energy into something? right? So let's start doing that now. Be very purposeful with the actions you're trying to take. And remember that even though Mars is starting to slow down, we also do still have the gift and benefit that he is direct. So he's given us, he's given us life, okay? He's still working for us. Now on the 13th, Mercury's going to move into Taurus. On the 15th, we've got the new moon happening in Taurus in your fourth house. And at the same time, we've got Uranus moving into Taurus into the fourth house. So this becomes a stacked fourth house, very busy energy. And I'm telling you, for you guys out there, if you have been in a situation with your home, your family, your real estate, your property, where you're like, I feel stifled here. I feel like my voice isn't being heard. I feel like this is the same old, same old. If I, your life doesn't feel purposeful and dynamic, you're gonna wanna break free from this energy and Uranus and Taurus is gonna help you do that. Now, where I think the real benefit to this shakeup is because Uranus does not come in softly. It's not gonna come in softly. In your fourth house, um, you're gonna feel the shakeup. The new moon is also here though, and this is where we plant these seeds of intention. What do you want this new beginning to look like? What, what do you want here, right? Because whatever you try and implement at the new moon usually has a chance of coming off pretty successfully. And since this is all in the fourth house here, it really helps this shift to occur. And I think it helps your consciousness to awaken a little bit more. You become even more aware and ready to be as innovative as your ruling planet is asking the space in your chart to be okay now i do think too because uranus only comes around every 84 years this is such a big deal to this area of your chart because really truly if you've been living under someone else's thumb or you've been living under old ideas and beliefs because remember this is your fourth house this is your root level values and beliefs you've made a foundation on the things that you believe in if they are not valid for you anymore you can't build the kind of life you want on them anymore they're hurting your relationships 
you're going to start being ready to rebel and kind of scrap those things. And you need to, in order to pursue um, personal progress, you're going to need to. But massive change is going to begin here. Now, on the other side of this massive change, I want to give you this perspective. Between May and November, Uranus is going to show you what's got to be changed. It's got to be shaken up here in this fourth house zone. Then he goes into a retrograde. But then in 2019, right, Uranus is going to move back into Taurus. We're here for seven years. So what's going to happen here is that all of these massive changes that needed to happen, all of the shakeups, you see how to implement them and you have the next seven years to really get them in place. And of course you get the benefit of watching as you go along. So you're going to begin the interchange. It's happening. No worries. It's on the way. Okay. Now on the 16th, we've got Mars moving into your sign. So moving into Aquarius. And this is great because it's actually going to be here for a while because Mars is not only moving in here, but then it's going to have to take a retrograde. So it's in your sign for quite a long time. All right. So what we've got here is action. This gives you action, energy, life, movement. Now this is phenomenal. You can get some things done. You can hustle. This is hustler kind of energy, right? What it also can do for you, and you've got your fourth house getting shaken up, Aquarius, I want you to be mindful. It can make you very argumentative because Mars likes to bring conflict where he goes as well. So be mindful, again, be purposeful with what's going on with your Mars energy. Why are you saying that? Why are you doing that? What's your motive behind what you're doing and how you're interacting with other people, right? So try and be mindful of that so you can keep the argumentative out if that's what it calls for, because sometimes you gotta have a breakdown before you have a breakthrough, right? The other side of that is use this amazing energy. You have this amazing energy at your disposal, get out there, take yourself out there. Go have fun, you need to look for a new house, you wanna have a conversation with your mom, do it, do it. Use this energy wisely, okay? Now, on the 19th, we've got Venus moving into Cancer, lighting up the sixth house space for you. This is wonderful for a daily routine. You know, it brings harmony to that daily routine. If the daily routine has been out of whack or things at work or things with your health have been out of whack, this is wonderful because it adds a little bit of salve to it to be able to help bring some harmony, some beauty here. As well, Venus does like to usher in some money so you could see a little something coming from work, especially if you own your own business um, or are self-employed or you do anything in a freelance kind of capacity, this could really be to your benefit as well. Now, as we close out the month on the 29th, we've got the full moon happening in Sagittarius, lighting up that 11th house space for you. And Mercury is over here in Gemini right now. So this is a beautiful, beautiful energy along with the sun. So between the 11th and the fifth house, the full moon says that something has to be ended, acknowledged, and adjusted. And I really think in some of your, in terms of some of your social connections, um, the full moon is helping you see which ones are not right for you, Aquarius. Which associations is it time to let go of? And I also feel like with all this Uranian energy rolling around, you may be needing to look at how you're showing up in social situations, including social media, or if you're showing up at all, especially if you own your own business. You know, can I type in your business name and find you online? Can it be done like that? If, that, if not, this is a wonderful energy to help kickstart that. With the sun and Mercury, both in that fifth house is where you're gonna wanna shine, you're gonna wanna express. So this is a wonderful energy for you to get something new started. It's also a great energy for romance. It really truly is. So you guys just be mindful of that, okay? It's a great energy for making babies. So if you don't wanna have any babies, make sure you protect yourself against that, all right? All right, guys, I think it's going to be a great month. I look forward to seeing how this Uranian energy starts to really kick into this specific house for you um, or wherever it happens to fall in your personal natal chart. So keep me posted in the comment section down below. I look forward to seeing you in $3 Thursdays. This month, we are going to discuss Chiron, transiting Chiron in Aries in the houses. So I look forward to seeing you there. Click in the description box or come visit me at stormygrace.com to, um, to get signed up. All right, guys, I'll see you next month.